Right, according to my watch, it's five o'clock and we're off. Uh, can somebody give me a thumbs up or let me know that my sound is working okay and that everything's all good and we can be good to go? Because that would be great. I'm looking at all your little notifications down here just to see. And if somebody says, yep, yeah, we're fine, then I shall make a start. Um, apparently there's about between seven and nine people watching at the moment. <laughs> so it's a small but select group so far. But I expect for more to come piling in very soon. So, do we have sound okay? Can everyone let me know if we're good? Someone type in and say something, because uh, there's probably a lag on here anyway, so you probably have already answered me and let me know if it's working. Uh, but um, I'll just fill in time for a little bit until, um, until I'll get going properly. Um, how are you all doing on this lovely sunny day? Everyone's probably outside in the sunshine rather than sitting in here watching this, but I expect people will check in later. Um, I thought, ah, oh, good, sound is fine. Thank you, Ben. Excellent. Good. Okay, so uh, today, something slightly different to what we've done before. Um, I won't be taking requests like we've done in the, in the last few. I've got a three-part presentation lined up for us today. Um, first part is based on something somebody asked me last time. They asked about shading and about lighting. And I thought, well, actually, that'd be quite a nice thing to talk about. So I'm going to talk about just, just, like, just shading techniques and how to sort of shade from light coming from different directions and stuff like that. And making use of the brown paper with the mid-tone so you get a shadow and a highlight and all that kind of thing. Uh, that'll be the first section. Then the middle section... Uh, it's the 23rd of April, which is St George's Day. Um, St George, of course, very famous for his uh, somewhat interesting relationship with the dragon. So, I'm going to be drawing some dragons for a bit, but not just your normal dragon. I'm going to look at different types of dragon. So, that's going to be part two. And then part three, again, because it's the 23rd of April, and the 23rd of April, apart from being St George's Day, is also Shakespeare's birthday. So I've got a little thing to finish off with at the end, um, based on one of Shakespeare's speeches. And I should be drawing some pictures and then reading some Shakespeare that's lined up with that. But first of all, we're going to start off with the shading. And I can see that I believe Izzy is here now. I'll see it says Maddie, so I'm assuming that's Izzy. Hello. You asked me about shading last time, about lighting. So we're actually going to start looking at some lighting. And I think, seeing as how we're nearly five minutes in, it's probably a time to start scribbling and drawing, don't you? So, here we go. Um, and again, the image is flipped, so it looks like I'm doing this left-handed, but I'm not. I'm doing it right-handed, and I've written all these backwards so that you can read them <laughs> when you're looking at the screen, um, which is always a fun challenge. Okay, so, lighting. Well, we're going to kick off with just some straight front lighting on this one here. Try to do some sort of similar faces, just neutral faces. And just some simple front lighting, which is the one that's going to have the least amount of shading. I mean, you could just leave it like that. But if you wanted to do a little bit of shading for a bit of front lighting, you can always do a little bit under the nose there. And maybe just a little bit under the, the ridge of the eyebrow. So this is going to be quite subtle, because I'm using a sort of pencil thing. Um, as opposed to the black pen, so you'll, you'll, you'll see it very subtly showing there, and the light reflects a bit on it, unfortunately, but that's, that's going to help. Um, so you could also possibly just put a little bit of shade on the sides of the head here, which would just give you that sense of it going back a bit, under the cheekbones maybe, and then a little bit under the chin. So it's finding these places, oh, the light is a bit reflecty on this unfortunately. Um, tip it forward. No, you can't really see. Never mind. Oh, let me see if I can go a bit harder. Maybe if I do it like that. Um, I might have to use a different pen, people. I might have to go and find another pen. Okay. That's a shame. This. The light shouldn't be doing that. But never mind. Should have tested it, shouldn't I? Whoops. It looks great from where I'm standing. 
Um, okay, so it's all about really minimal lighting when you're, when you're shading from the front. And then if you've got a highlight, you can just put some highlights in the eyes, maybe a little bit on the end of the nose. It really is very, very... I'll post these at the end. What I'll do is I'll photograph this lot and I'll post them as well so you can see exactly what I was talking about. But, you know, it's just this tiny little amounts of shading and highlighting from the front just to give you a bit of front. Oh, you can see it a bit. That's all right. Okay, so let's look at top light. Now with top light, obviously it's going to be shading down this way and you're going to be catching darker underneath all these ridges. So where we had a little bit of shading coming in there before, we could now put a bit more across a brow ridge like this. Yeah, and then let's put some shadow under the fringe of the hair. The cheekbones would catch more light when you're shading from above like this. The nose underneath Again, you can put much more of a, a shadow there. Sometimes it's quite nice to put a, a little bit of a shadow that doesn't quite meet the bottom of the nose as well, which gives you a sense of 3D of the nose. The, re the light sometimes doesn't with me because of all the fluff, but the light reflects off of you and it comes back up. So you can get that sort of effect there. Um, so again, it's all about finding the areas that are sitting behind other areas and just accentuating the, the, uh, the layers, really. So, you know, you're, you're shading underneath like that. Picking up all this because the face isn't flat, is it? You know, so, and then probably a little bit of light under the, uh, dark under the eyes as well like that. So there you go, you've got some top light going on on there. All right. And then, Again, with our highlighter this time. I remember I talked about that little bit of reflected light on the nose, just underneath there. The nose is gonna catch the light on the top. You might want to put a little bit of shine across the top of the, uh, the ridge of the, uh, the forehead there, maybe some light up above. Catch a little bit on the top lip, and then maybe on the, on the bottom lip there, like that. Where you put a shadow, quite often next to a shadow, there'll be a highlight. So, Yeah, which helps bring it forward like that. And the same with the cheeks, on those cheekbones. If you, it's a bit like anyone who does their makeup shading. You know, you, you're finding those those highlights and uh, and uh, shadow. So we're contouring. We're contouring with pencils. Here we go. Um, all right. So that's a that's a top light. You see. Right. Now we're going to do uh, bottom lighting, which is quite dramatic. And this is a trickier one. Often bottom lighting is quite tricky because it's, um, it's a very unusual kind of light and it's, everything's sort of counterintuitive. So, for instance, you're not lighting underneath the nose. You'd be, you'd be, you'd be shading on the, the top lip more, like, like this. Oh, I don't know what it's like down there because I've got my... Uh, there's a shady area across. I'm hoping that you can see. Um, The shadows underneath the eyes are the bits sit, that sit on top of the cheekbones. So instead of shading underneath the cheekbones this time, you're shading above the cheekbones. Mm, it's, it's not the best light. Oh, you can see it a bit when I do that. There we go. If I tip it forward a bit like that, that helps. Um, so yeah, shading on top of the cheekbones. The, um, the forehead, again, this first part of the forehead, which was catching the highlight before up here, is now the bit that's going to be the most shaded. So, but then the top of the forehead up here will also be in shade because your head is starting to slope back at that point. So that's just sort of, this is almost like horror movie lighting, you know. Um, now underneath there is going to be light again, but you might want to do that thing I talked about where you have a shadow that almost but not quite comes to the edge. The left side is not as clear as the right for some reason. Yeah, I know, it's the, it's the weird it's the weird light, the way it's catching the light in here. I will post these at the end. I will photograph and post them so you can see. I don't really know why. It's Oh, hang on, look at that. If I turn it like that, there we go. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Okay, a bit more awkward for me to draw, but we'll get there. Um, where was I doing? Oh yeah, across the shading on the cheekbones. So 
we're going above the cheekbones this time, like that, and then the top part of the chin would get shaded there. Okay, so this is where the light is coming from underneath now. Um, yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? You can see the shading a lot better now. I've twisted it a bit. Okay, we're, we're, we're in business. I can't really see what I'm doing, but apart from that, it's great. Um, all right, so, and then let's get the trusty highlighter in again and just tick in some of those spots that are just going to help shading the, the underside of the cheekbones that time, shading the underside of the eyebrows, little highlights in the eyes. Okay, see, so, so we're shading up from underneath that way. Then um, this one here, we're going to look at some side lighting this time. Um, doesn't matter which way we light, I might as well light it from this side and we're going to shade the far side. So looking at a bit of side lighting, again, just think about the planes of the face. What is in front of the other? What's going to cast a shadow? It's quite obvious really, I guess, but it's, it's always worth saying. So this is so hard. <laughs> I've had to turn it at such an angle so it get, doesn't get a shine that I'm drawing around a corner. However, we can do it. You'll excuse it if it's a bit ragged, I'm sure. So this time we're shading half the nose and the nose is what's casting a shadow across the face there. The, the, the side of the face itself is going to be in full shadow down there. Oh, this is tricky. And then because your eye sits into its socket, the inside of the eye is the part that's going to shade. And on that one, it's going to be the outside of the eye that shades, do you see? Um, And again, the chin is going to be casting a shadow over that side, but we're not going to be putting any shadows into the cheekbones at this side. We will put them in over here though. See, so that gives us the side, the side lighting. And again, now this time we can put a highlight down that side of the nose. Let's put some highlights in there and let's highlight the whole side of the face this time. There. You see? So those completely blank face faces we had before, just with a little bit of simple shading. And I say, it's all about just what is in front of what and what is behind what. And that's, that's where you get your shade points. So, and you don't have to do much to give a sense of where the light is coming from. So, so the front light, top light, side light, bottom light. Yeah, and the, the, the darker you, you do it, the, the deeper the shadows, you can ex exaggerate the lighting. Uh, that way. I've got a couple more on the next page, I think I came up with a couple more. Um, edge lighting and two directional lighting. Okay, so edge lighting. On this one over here, when I did the side light, I shaded right up to the edge of the, of the face, as you can see. Now sometimes you're going to get a little bit of light spilling around. So it's much the same as when you shaded a side, but you leave a gap, okay? So you can put your shadow in as if we're lighting from this way, but there's a secondary light source coming from that way. So again, you still have your shadows in there and in, in the corner of the eye there and being cast on that side. But you leave a bit of a gap before the line on that side of the face. And this is quite nice. This really helps give a sense of, of 3D. Um, that's a neat little trick. And they use it a lot in comic book. Com this, was a, this is a classic sort of Marvel comics and 
some of the sort of British, like the Dan Dare and stuff, they used to do this kind of lighting all the time. So you've got your principal light source, you know, coming down this, and you might, you might, if you were doing this in colour, you might do a nice warm yellowy light coming from this side, and you know, you'd be, you, you'd put the light coming that way. But then, in a, in a like a, like maybe like a cold blue, you could throw down that side of the face. And suddenly you have that two directional light source coming in. Yeah. So that's what I mean by the by the sort of the rim lighting on one side. If you can hear banging, that's the kids upstairs. I did tell them to be quiet, but they don't appear to be uh, listening. What a surprise. Um, okay, and finally, what I thought I'd do in this section is um, I'd look at two two directions two-directional lighting where you're being lit from both sides. This is some, um, I wonder if I turn that. Oh, there we go. I've got a bit more room now in here. Hopefully we'll still get some, hopefully we won't have lost that light on this side. Um, let's find out. So we're lighting both sides, which means the center of the face is the part that's going to end up being in shadow. So the middle of the forehead is not getting the light. The light is coming in directly from two sides of the face. So this time, the flat of the nose, the front of the nose, which up until now has always been sort of lit in some way, would be the bit that would be in shadow. And uh, again, this is one that gets used quite a lot in comic books as a, a, for, for sort of effect. It's very dramatic. Uh, it looks great on stage when you do two directional lighting on people as well. Um, the inside of the eyes area would obviously be the bit that would get caught in the shadow because of being in the, in the, in the dip, as it were. Um, and you take a lot more care about this. I mean, as I say, like I say every week when it comes to this sort of thing, I'm really rushing this and just doing a real sort of uh, scratching the surface kind of version of any of this sort of stuff I'm talking about. But you can play with it and, 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 and find, you know, practice and find your own ways to make it work for you. So on this one, we might as well put a bit of that edge lighting down both sides. Um, there we go. So you see what I mean? It, it's um, That one has now got the light coming from two directions. You could actually make that a lot bolder if you wanted to. I mean, there's no reason why the highlight on the sides couldn't be, couldn't be a lot stronger, especially if you're working in, you know, more than two colors. You can, Pump it up like that, there we go. Pretty good. All right. So, just going back over that again, there you go. So you've got the, um, I say these were all just neutral line faces and this is literally just about where to put shadows just every now and then to sort of create a sense of 3D. Your front light, just picking out those little bits of the topography of the face. The top light, where the nose is casting a shadow more, the chin is casting the shadow, you're, you're catching the top edges. This little trick about not taking the shadow on the nose right to the bottom, but having a reflected light catching up on the bottom of the nose, which you can also do on, on chins and stuff. Uh, this one here, which was the bottom light, the sort of dramatic lighting that you often see in sort of in you know, horror movies and stuff, and people are lit from underneath. Um, and that always works the opposite to what you think, all the areas the, the, the top areas actually are the bits in shade. It's like an inverse of something like that one. And then regular side lighting, where you're taking the shadow right to the edge of the face and putting a little highlight there. And then this is the same as that, but with an extra light down that side, an edge light or a rim light, a bit like backlighting when you're doing a portrait photography. And then two directional lighting, where the center of the face is the part that actually goes dark. Okay. Um, I appear to have a gap at the bottom here on my page, so I can probably take a request. If anyone's got a something they'd like to see drawn in that area, I'm happy to, to do that. And I should take a quick swig of Peroni while I'm working. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Right. Um, 
yeah, I mean, although I said at the beginning I'm not doing a requesty kind of thing this week, I am actually, there's a few bits of time where I can fit into about that. So before we move on to Dragons, which is part two, 23rd of April, St George, so before we move on to our Dragons, uh, let's, uh, let's see, anything anyone want me to fill that space with? The delay that we get here probably doesn't help, uh, so I should just keep talking until something crops up for me. Oh, it's too nice a day to be standing in here doing this. I really should be in the garden, but then I wouldn't. It would be blowing away, wouldn't it? Um, I wouldn't be. Able, I might try doing it outside one day. Actually, go under the trees at the end of the garden and see if I can get any kind of a signal up there and do some outside drawing. Maybe I'll give that a go next week. We'll have a look and see. So, anybody got any requests in the bottom there, or shall we move on? Maybe an animal space. Okay, an animal space. Um, yes. So, with shading, I guess I, I guess you're talking about as well. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, yeah, sure. All right. Let's do. Well, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? What animal should we do? Let's do a dog. Well, okay. Let's do a dog. So, well, let's just do a simple dog face. We'll go a bit cartoony again, because why not? I am drawing around a corner again. Um, oh, it's got no battery signal. Sorry, this is supposed to be on charge, but it's not. Bear with me. It's supposed to be mains here. I don't want to be losing this. Um, but for some reason, it's not picking up its charge. Hold on. If it um, if I disappear, I will be back. Um, let's see if that that might have got battery. We'll find out in a moment. Okay. So, oh gosh, what's happened to the light? That's weird. Um, when I come in, it's it's oh gosh. Okay, we're back. technical glitches this week but we're getting there okay so there's a little dog face um, again they're going to follow the same rules as, as, as the human for god dear the lighting's gone all weird as well. now I'm kicking that oh my gosh it's a disaster everything's going horribly wrong okay what is happening here no this is this isn't good I'm so sorry about the light something very strange has happened today it wasn't doing this last time. Oh well, let's push on, see what happens. You'd still follow those same rules about finding the areas that sit in front of other parts. You can put a nice little shadow under the cheek there to help make that area stand out. And that trick I talked about the nose you can actually do that on things like the ears so when you put those little highlights that when things don't quite go to an edge anyway I'm afraid something very strange is happening with my light here and I'm gonna have to see if I can sort this out um, so there's gonna be some jiggling while I move things around See, every time I go away, the light gets really good. The light has whitewashed the page. Yes, I know. Uh, again, probably because of the, the delay. Um, if I stand back here, <laughs> if I stand back, and uh, every time I reach in. Guys, I don't know what's going on. Nothing's changed in the room, but suddenly all the lighting's gone a bit weird. Um, let me just try something. I'll be... Okay, this could either be better or worse or make no difference. Um, I'll put a bit of top light on, see if that helps. Well, it's not quite so bad, but it's still burning out a little bit, isn't it? Oh dear. Oh 
bit silly now. Never mind, we'll press on, we'll get this to work, don't you worry. Um, it's a bit better. Okay, so there we go. <laughs> that was rubbish. Okay, so just a quick recap before I move on. That was the shading thing. Oh, the lights got worse with the shading. Can't believe it, it's really not working well today. Anyway, there we go. Well, let's move on. Let's draw some dragons, shall we? That's, uh, I'm a bit fed up with what that done. This is gonna be easier because it's just black lines. So hopefully, I don't know why it's doing this. I wonder if I can, I don't know if you can lock the exposure on Photoshop, any, on Facebook. Right, okay, dragons. Let's power through. So everybody says dragons, they've got wings and they've got, they got legs and they got, okay, okay. There are lots of different types of dragon. The one we all think of, of as, which is actually a dragon, it's like the Welsh dragon. I'm gonna do a bit of underdrawing just so that um, I've got something to work over. And you've seen me do underdrawing before. I'm just doing it with a, with a blue pencil so that I can see what I'm doing here. You probably won't see terribly much of it, especially when it burns out like that, goodness me. Oh, it's so, so burning out. I can't believe it. I don't really know what to do. I wish there was some sort of exposure control, but never mind. Never mind. I think I'm going to have to move back to these evening ones when I've got a lot more controllable light in the room. Um, these daytime ones with the daylight just, just don't work. Unless, unless, bear with me. I'm going to try something, people. I'm going to, it's going to get radical. <laughs> Let's move around. Let's move right round here. Nope, I'm going to go the other way. Then I'm not standing in my own light. This is getting silly. This is so professional. This is so professional. <sighs> See, it was working perfectly before, and now it's all gone horribly wrong. See? Perhaps to the best of us. God dear me, can't believe I'm doing this. Live chaos, people, live chaos. Okay, let's, uh, let's see how this goes. It's all my paper gone. There it is. Right. <laughs> now it's in the dark. Oh dear me. This is just getting silly. Well, it's, I suppose it's a bit better. Who knows? Underdrawing. There we go. What if I turn the big light off again now? Maybe it'll be better. Whee! That's not quite so bad. Not quite so bad. It's still rubbish. So sorry. This is actually the crappiest live thing I've ever done because it's just falling apart at the seams now. Right, I'm just, it's, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. The lighting has gone completely wrong. I am absolutely embarrassed by this. Anyway, let's carry on. Dragon. So, normal kind of dragon. It's got its wings attached to its shoulder, like the classic, the lovely Welsh dragon. As a proud Welshman, I'm quite attached to this sort of dragon. I do love a nice dragon. When in doubt, as you say, when in doubt, draw dragons. Oh, this is better anyway, at least the light's <coughs> bearable.
Well, there we go. So that is your classic dragon. That's what everyone thinks of as a dragon, which is fine. 23rd of April, St George's Day, maybe this was the sort of dragon he was fighting. If someone said dragon, that's what they're talking about. Now, then you see something like um, The Hobbit, and you have Schmaug in The Hobbit. And you see that, and people say, the dragon's Schmaug. But actually, Schmaug is not a dragon. I'm sure that some of you know what Schmaug is, but I shall... I shall tell you in a second. Now, the, um, instead of having four legs and the wings attached to its shoulders, this kind of beastie has arms like a bat, where the front legs, as it were, are actually a wing. And it can walk along on its front legs, a bit like a pterodactyl. So this is quite often, you see this in films and books and stuff like that, and people say the dragon, the dragon came in. And I guess in a way they're kind of right, it is a type of dragon, but technically if it looks like that, like Schmaug, and it has those front legs like that, it's called a wyvern. Okay, well, I've got to try and write it backwards. There we go. So that, that's a wyvern, not a dragon. Okay, let's do the next one. You don't see these ones so often, but you sometimes get them in some stories where it's a bit like our first friend that we saw with the four legs. But the big difference with one of these is they don't have wings at all. A wingless type of dragon. And these are called a drake. I don't plan in advance how I'm going to make this look either. When I'm uh, doing the lines straight in on the underdrawing, I haven't actually thought about what sort of face it's going to have. It literally just sort of occurs to me at the, at the time as I'm, as I'm drawing it. So I'm kind of making this stuff up as I go along a little bit, which is typical of how I function in life. But there we go. Um, Are we hearing my children in the background here? I can hear them being quite noisy. If you can't, that's actually quite good for you, but I can, and it's very off-putting. Um, so that... Oh, I'm getting good at this writing backwards, Mark, hopefully. Is a drake. A wingless dragon. A drake. Okay. I'll go back through them in a minute. Then 
There's another type of dragon, they're called the worm, which basically has no legs at all. But there's a particular type called a lindworm. And the lindworm does have front legs. So again, a little bit of underdrawing there that we can see. I always think when it's it's nice when you when you're drawing dragons to sort of around the, the neck and chin to think about lizards and dinosaurs and give them those lovely sort of folds of flesh and creases and frills and goodness knows what it always gives them a really nice bit of detail and texture. Um, It's nice to put a little bit of spine on the back there, which helps you get that curve coming around the corner there. And, uh, yeah, so this is a lindworm, which is the wingless type of dragon with just Two legs at the front. Okay, were there any more? Or is that is that all me dragons? Let's have a look. Um, yes, okay, so just going back through. Uh, for those of you that have just joined us, we were looking at some shading before. I'll just whip back over. Um, we did have a little bit of a technical hiatus in the middle where my light all, lighting all went horribly wrong and I had to do a little bit of a rejig to sort of get everything to work but we managed to find some sort of light that kind of worked again now. So this was when we were talking about, ironically, talking about lighting. And uh, we started off with these four faces looking identical, and then we lit from different directions, and I talked about shading. Um, and there was a few more, and then someone asked for an animal face as well. So we did that. Now we've been looking at dragons. Dragons. Um, let's write dragon, shall we? Okay. Um, dragons. And um, I've talked about the different types of dragons, seeing as how it's St George's Day. So that's your classic dragon with four legs and two wings, like the Welsh dragon. Apologies for repetition. That's a wyvern. That's like the sort of smaug type dragon where the front legs are actually the wings. The drake. The drake, a wingless four legged dragon. The lindworm, which is a wingless two-legged dragon and the regular has no legs at all. Okay, right, I'm going to move on and I'll take a swig of this and I'm going to say, right, we're going to go into sort of the last section now. So I'm going to be drawing some characters. Um, I'm trying to work out whether to just draw the characters first of all and then I'm going to go back through them and apply them to some Shakespeare, because it is Shakespeare's birthday and death day. So um, I am going to draw some characters, Oops. and then some of you can see if you can work out what Shakespeare speech this is going to be linked to, but I shall start off with some characters. So, and they're gonna be cartoony, we're gonna have some fun, and I'm gonna do this underdrawing that I've talked about before, um, when I've talked about how you do the, the very simple shapes underneath that you can build a drawing around. And a lot of the things we've talked about in the last couple of weeks have come into play in these drawings. Okay. So, it's still saying low battery. I can't believe it. It looks like I might disappear in a second, which I don't understand because 
this is supposed to be on charge. And if I am, if I do disappear, it's nothing personal. Oh God. Okay. I think I have a problem with my cable. Uh, please don't go away, I'm gonna be right back. days today frankly been one of those days where everything has been going wrong I'm gonna to have to move again because I'm too far away for the new cable oh god right please work right not quite sure if that's charging or not now because I can't see the because I'm on this screen I can't actually see if the charging's working. We'll have to hope it is but if I suddenly disappear it was the charge going not not anything else. Okay let's press on and if I do disappear I'll try and come back and finish off all right oh nightmare right so first one first of these characters There we go. So. There's our first little character. Right? Moving on. Let's see what happens next. So. Character two. You can see that underdrawing thing that I've talked about before where you're scribbling in your basic shapes that you're going to use to build the picture upon. <laughs> I think, think Frankie might have got this. Like I say guys, if, if this isn't actually charging now and I disappear, I will finish this off and post it later. Because um, it's very depressing if this does disappear. My technology's been letting me down. It's been one of those days today. Technology has not been my friend. It's been very frustrating. So, but we soldier on, we soldier on. We see how it goes. Move on. Character three. Um. Okay. Very simple underdrawing for this one.
um, you could probably see how heavily influenced I was as an artist by by Uderzo, who used to be the uh, the illustrator for Asterix, who died very recently. Um, I loved his drawing so much, and and it's um, it does come out quite a lot. You can see it. Um, Okay, let's uh, like I said, it's so funny. I don't actually know what I'm going to draw until I start drawing it. Sometimes I had no idea, for instance, that I was going to draw this character running until I started to draw him. So. Let's, uh, speed drawing, why not? We always have a nice bit of speed drawing. It never hurts, does it? Sometimes it's fun just to see how much effect you can get with the simplest, scribbliest lines and not actually stressing too much on detail in actual fact. So that, that in itself is quite an interesting uh, experiment. Let's, oh, let's chuck on a bit of a highlight, why not? Okay, so that's that one. underdrawing again, that nice simple shapes I talked about, we're going over those things several times, the, how a simple underdraw can actually work for a multitude of characters, no matter what shape they are, you're still following the same basic principles on the underdrawing. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Okay. Usually when I draw, I start off by drawing a line and then go from there. Yeah, that's an interesting way of doing it. Um, I always start with the underneath scribble to get the energy of the drawing, the, the thing. Tim's watching. Hello, Tim. Oh, gosh, Tim. Tim, who's just joined us, was at art college with me, and I was always in awe of how good he was as an artist. So now I'm suddenly incredibly self-conscious because he's really good. Hello, Tim. Um, well, luckily, he draws quite differently to me, though, so maybe he won't be judging. Remember we talked about material before, how the material um, hangs on certain parts of the body and then, and then drops. So although the belly would be going back round, how the material clings to the top and then hangs down. We talked about that last time. Um, so funny, a lot of the little things that we've chatted about before are coming back into play um, when I'm doing these drawings now. So there we go. Because you need to put quite a short time into there. Yep. Okay. Uh, two more to go. A bit of clue there. Then 
Just keep checking the poem to make sure I haven't missed anything. <laughs> Not a lot of talking during this bit because I'm uh, <laughs> I'm concentrating on what I'm on what I'm doing. So do bear with me. I do beg your pardon. It's probably not as interesting as it could be, but it was a bit of a stressful one today, wasn't it? With all that technical stuff going wrong, I was a bit, I was a bit disappointed in that. I hope it'll be better next time. I promise. And I shall find out what was causing that issue and make sure it doesn't happen again. Um, And then last one. Right, so there he is. Quick refreshment. So that was seven very fast drawings. Seven being a bit of a clue as to what that might be about. So, a bit of a shorter session today. I don't think we're gonna go much over the hour today because it's uh, the tech's been not playing, playing very well and it's not been the the easiest one today but anyway we'll come back to it next time <laughs> that's exactly what I look like these days <laughs> I know the feeling mate I think I'm one of the earlier ones with it anyway so in honor of it being Shakespeare's birthday let's just go through the seven ages of man all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players they have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts, his acts being seven ages. At first the infant, mewling and puking in his nurse's arms. And then the whining schoolboy, 
with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school. And then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad to his mistress' eyebrow. Then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, in fair round belly with good cape on lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The sixth age shifts into the lean and slippered pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on side, his youthful hose well saved, a world too wide of his shrunk shank, and his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble, pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Son's teeth, son's eyes, son's taste, son's everything. Good old Shakespeare. It's a bit good, isn't it, that speech? And it's a gift, it's a gift to, to do all these characters. It just gives you all the information in there. So there's the, the, the baby. I didn't do the mewling and puking. I thought that'd be a bit much for a, for a Thursday afternoon. The schoolboy, you know, with satchel on his side, creeping unwillingly to school. He doesn't look very happy about things. But it talks about the lover, doesn't it? So you've got to do a sort of, you know, sighing like a furnace with a woeful ballad. Did I ever play Jake Quiz? No, I would love to play Jake Quiz. I so would love to play. It's one of my dream roles that I'd love to do one day. Um, he's the one that does that speech in the play, for those that don't know. Um, so that's him with the woeful ballad with his brother. The soldier, <laughs> full of strange oaths. Where is he? Uh, jealous in honour, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation. Even in the cannon's mouth. I should have done a cannon, shouldn't I, really? Even in the cannon's mouth, there we are. But it was the justice, I love this one, the justice in fair round belly with good cape and lined, eyes severe and beard of formal cut, <laughs> full of wise saws and modern instances. You see, it's great, it's such a gift. It's just working from the words. You can find these characters based on exactly what's there. The sixth age into the lean and slippered pantaloon. Lean, narrow, slippered pantaloon. Spectacles on nose and pouch on side. Uh, his youthful hose, well saved. Uh, now too wide for his shrunk shank, so he's, 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 all sort of, he's got wrinkled tights. That's basically what it says, his tights are all wrinkled. And then the last one, as it says, last scene of all, second childishness. Son's teeth, son's eyes, son's taste, and in this case, son's hair as well. Son's everything, just sat quietly in the care home. Um, right, I'm probably going to knock it on the head there today, um, because... I that, that lighting wasn't doing us any favours earlier on, so I did rush through it a little bit at the start. Um, but hopefully it was, you know, despite the chaos of the midsection, when you got to see me moving things around for no good reason, apart from the fact my tech wasn't working, um, hopefully some of the drawing was fun. Uh, we'll go back to general drawing and requests next time, I think, and we might move to a later evening one again. Um, just so I can control things a bit more. Um, thank you so much for watching what was possibly not my finest hour. <laughs> Stay safe, get out in the evening sunshine and have a nice drink and forget this ever happened. And um, I will see you all again very soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.